Welcome to CEO Interviews, a production of Gorecom, in which we take the time to speak with small cap CEOs about what's going on at their companies. And it's been a while since we had this company on. We're talking about St. George Zecco Mining, trades on the CSC under the stock symbol SX, and for our friends in the US, SXOOF. Joining us today is Herb Dewar. He's interim president and CEO. For those of you new to the story, uh, St. George can be broken down into, into three divisions and three operations. Uh, essentially, they're a diversified eco mining company. What does that mean? They're developing technology to reduce the environmental impact of mining. And they've done that through the creation of their EVSX subsidiary. That is a simple but important mission. Electric vehicles are our future. We all know that. But rare earth minerals, minerals that are used to make electric vehicle batteries are growing scarce. The company's next generation technology recycles nickel, cobalt, and lithium from old batteries. So we're going to talk about that. They're also advancing two projects in Quebec that are focusing on battery metals. And finally, they own all the active mineral exploration licenses in, in Iceland that are focused on gold and geothermal. Herb, welcome to the show. Thanks, George. It's good to be here. Uh, congratulations on your appointment as interim president and CEO. Well, uh, thank you. That happened in early March, so you or mid March, so you've had a couple of months to kind of settle in before we start talking about, you know, uh, the specifics of each division. Talk to us about thirty thousand foot picture. How nicely positioned is St. George's uh, in its mission to accomplish the things it wants to do? Yeah, absolutely. The uh... St. George's is a really diversified company. It's got uh, exploration on the one arm. It's got R&D on the other side, looking at uh, recovery of metals through various patents that Enrico de Cesar uh, created. And we're, um, lastly, we're uh, poised in a pretty good place for uh, technology uh, advances as well. So I, I think we're we're in a great space. And I can't imagine that uh, with all these various arms that we're not going to end up with something that's going to, to make us tick. Um, I want to ask, switching gears, I want to ask for an update regarding your exploration work on Julie Nickel, uh, Manicuag and Palladium. But before we get into that, tell us a little bit about your background, because this is where it becomes really relevant, how you became, uh, you know, interim president CEO of St. George. Well, my background is a, I have been working in mineral exploration since the late 70s, a long time. Uh, I've worked for majors in, and uh, small companies and created a lot of uh, product for various different companies uh, as far as projects to work on and probably been involved with at least four or five different mines that have actually gone into production. And that's not to say that I found them. It's to say that I was part of a team that, that did that. Uh, I met up with Frank and Mark uh, about 15 years ago and started working with them and was on several boards with uh, Frank and, and or Mark, one or the other. Uh, and in 20, I think it was 2011, end of 2011 or so, uh, I came on the board of St. George's uh, as a director. Uh, after that, I've been on with them since then. And uh, in, well, in the end of March, I was offered this position. So I, uh, uh, I accepted it. I, I gladly accepted it, but at the same time, I'm, uh, it's been a bit of a steep learning curve on some of these things that I spend most of my time on the exploration side. And so learning some of the other arms of this are, have been problematic for me. So, so let's talk first about Julie, the, the Julie Nickel project then. Give us the broad strokes on that. What are you guys doing in terms of exploration there? So Julie, uh, we've got, uh, I think we just let out a press release that said that we were, we've got an 11,600 meter uh, 
drilling project that's going to be coming up through this year and into the next year. We've got a camp that we just uh, uh, got loaned by a one of the uh, logging companies there that can take care of uh, up to 300 people because of COVID. It's a 30% uh, maximum of that 300. So we'll, it's about a oh, 45 minute drive from, from Julie. So we'll be putting up most of our people in that and working out of there. So it, it's uh, saved us about a few hundred thousand. And uh, we've got a drill rig that'll be on site in probably less than a month and waiting for permits at this point. What do you know about Julie today and where do you want to go with that? What's your thesis going forward? Well, that's, that's an excellent question. Uh, the Julie, we've uh, recently taken a bulk sample, which ran uh, over one and a half percent nickel. And it's um, where we sent that off to Enrico to, to, uh, assess and determine what kind of process we're going to use. And beyond that, I would say that we finally got a handle on how the mineralization is sitting in there, which uh, previously we drilled uh, back in the 2012 time or so. We missed it. We, we hit it the first few meters and then, then we lost it. Apparently it's dipping in the opposite direction. We've turned the rigs around. We're gonna drill back in the opposite direction and it should make a considerable amount of difference. Uh, we've also got, uh, we've enlarged the project uh, by I believe 50%. Uh, we're following up on conductors that suggest this, this zone is considerably larger than uh, we previously understood. And I guess that's that's about a wrap up on Julie. If all if all goes well, and I'm not looking for a resource estimate, obviously, but if all goes well, what do you think you might have there based on your uh, on your thesis? Yeah, I I won't even try to guess on that. That's, yeah, I'm hoping uh, for a very good result, but uh, in geology, you know that you don't know anything until you get the results back. How so? Let's uh, let's let, let me find let me finish on Julie. There, you expect to be drilling in about thirty days. What's the cadence of results and assays that'll be coming out? Is it is it are they will it take a long while? Are they going to be short intervals every thirty to forty five days? What are you expecting there in terms of getting information back and out to the investors? Yeah, I I would hope. And again, the labs are all backed up and and. and uh, we don't have our permit in hand yet, so I don't want to make any unrealistic uh, expectations. In fact, I will say that my name is Dewar, and I, I get things done, but I don't necessarily overpromise. I, I like to underpromise and overdeliver. Okay, so my particular feeling for this is that we're we're probably uh, sixty days out, more than thirty days. Uh, okay to get start getting results into the lab. And then depending on how bad the labs really are, uh, as far as backed up, not, not anything terrible about them, but uh, I'm gonna give it another 30 to 45 days before we start getting results back. Okay, fair enough. I mean, that's that gives everyone a really good timeline, a nice, nice set of expectations or at least ballpark you know we're not going to hold yeah. you specific days but yes because with some with some projects they all vary right they all they all raise uh, absolutely um let's talk about manic the yeah. uh the short form what give us the same kind of discussion on manic so manic we've we're actually uh collecting the old core from the project uh which uh goes back to 2007 2008 and, and why, you bringing, guys, why you guys were collecting old core? Well, I'll tell you exactly why. The, the previous people that drilled out there were willing to do a, um, an assessment of the base metals, but it cost a fair amount of money to do uh, additional assays for platinum, palladium, 
rhodium, all the PGEs. And so uh, they only did a few, but when they did them on a few core, they found that there were significant numbers in, the, in those. And so we're going to go back and rerun all of that core for the PGE elements, which hadn't been run before. That may give us a, a whole new uh, set of, of uh, targets that we really hadn't realized were there before. All right, so that's, uh, so that's going to have to go spend the money drilling. You already have the core there. How much core do you have? And, and will it give you, once you assay or retest them all, will it give you a really good indication of what you may now have? Well, it's going to help. I'm not going to say it's going to give a uh, definitive. The core is in good shape, according to our crews out there. And uh, so we should be getting a fairly decent representative, ref, excuse me, representative uh, uh, indication of what's on the ground in certain areas that were drilled. Like we have a, a zone called the Bob, and it has probably, uh, if I remember right, 30, 20, 25 to 30 holes drilled in there. And uh, there were a few good hits of, of nickel and, and cobalt, uh, but only one of the holes was assayed for the, for the uh, platinum group elements. So um, we believe that there's probably similar grades in even the better holes that, that were drilled out there, but never assayed. Uh, that's going to give us an immediate determination of where we're run, wanting to put our, our additional holes that we drill. Plus, we have other conductors off to the west and east that have had very little drilling, few holes to no holes. And those also have some reasonable grades of uh, nickel and, and uh, copper. Uh, first, I want to ask you about timeline, then ask you how about how your nickel technology may tie into all this, but what's a timeline ballpark look for, uh, you know, retesting th that core? I, we, well, as we take our camp gear out there, we're bringing back loads of core in the plane. So I am hoping that we're going to be doing that within the next uh, 30 to 40 days of actual testing of the core while we're working on our permit and then moving on to drilling as well. So fair to say, Herb, that the next 45 to 60 days is gonna, is gonna bring St. George a whole bunch of new information. We don't know what that information is gonna be, but you're expecting a whole set of new data on Julie, on Manic, yep. and, and things could change pretty drastically one way or another, hopefully for the positive. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Ultimately, will there be a way that you guys think of tying in your technology to your projects? Well, that's, we're actually doing that as we speak, where uh, the nickel uh, bulk sample that came from Julie has gone to the lab and they're working on that to determine particle size, uh, whether or not it floats well, how it's tied up with the other elements. So we'll, we'll have a pretty good sense of, of uh, what kind of technology we need to do that. And it, it's going to be very similar for, for Manicwagon. Uh, and if it. you could explain, how, how did you guys get that bulk sample from the Julie Nickel project? What's, how, how are you, what's there already that you're able to tap into? Yeah, so there's there's a uh, there were two zones that that we had originally found at Julie. Uh, one is called the Julie uh, Discovery Zone, and the second one is the is Trench Two. Um, and so we went to both of those. We'd already had some reasonable samples taken. Those samples uh, showed significant. Um, values in nickel, cobalt, copper, and even some PGEs. And so we had done uh, uh, channel sampling with a saw. And so we had a, a fairly good base place to start. So this time around, we came in with a, with a uh, 
virtually a jackhammer and we just took a big bulk sample it's it's i suppose more of a a rotary hammer that uh, goes down to up to a meter and they came out there with vacuum they got all of the the uh, pulp and and dust and and chips all put in bags and took them off i think they were somewhere around uh, uh 400 kilogram uh, total samples from each wow. one. And that gives enough uh, sample medium for Enrico to work with in his lab to, to determine how we're going to go about uh, separating that. Herb, before we sign off, is there anything, uh, and I like what you said earlier, you want to under promise and overperform. So I'm not going to ask you for more information, but as you sign off, is there, what do you want your shareholders to know about St. George, whether it's this summer, the rest of the year, long-term, what do you want shareholders to know? I guess I, I've seen a lot of, uh, of information out there about the stock price. And I will say the stock price is, is, is like talking to me about it's raining out and I'd like a sunny day. You know, it's just the way it is. Uh, but we have enough different uh, ways of, of making investors uh, money in the long run that I think that you've just got to look at this as a, as a long-term investment that is going to pay off in several different ways, whether it be a, a spinoff of EVSX or a discovery in Manicwagan or you know, gold in Iceland, it doesn't matter. They're, they're all up for grabs at this point. And this company's got, got them all. Herb, that's a great way to end it off, uh, especially from someone who's self-proclaimed to be a doer, uh, yeah. <laughs> under promiser, over performer. So thanks for joining us today. Thanks for kind of giving us that, you know, that we needed this. We haven't had, we haven't had St. George on in a while, uh, giving us that overall big picture view. And most certainly what's been great about this is the next 45 to 60, 70 days sound like we're going to get a lot of information about St. George. So we should all be watching very, very closely. Absolutely. Thank you, George. For everybody at home, you've been watching or you've been listening by podcast on Spotify, Google, Apple, your favorite podcast platform to Herb Dewar. He's interim president CEO of St. George Echo Mining trades on the CSC under SX. And for our friends in the U.S., under SXOOF, look, you heard uh, what, Herb, what, what Herb had to say, or you watched uh, about what Herb had to say. It's up to you to do your due diligence now. Make sure you do, you do your due diligence. Put St. George on your watch list because uh, the next 45, 60, 75 days are, are going to present a whole new picture, and you want to be, be here for that. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. See you next time.